Stage 8, Fake News. Pistol and Rifle. Start positions, standing in area A with toes touching X marks and hands touching computer keyboard. Pistol loaded, safe, holstered. Rifle loaded, safe, staged in rifle barrel. On signal, shooter will engage pistol targets 1 through 6 with pistol from area A, then safely abandon pistol and pistol bin. Next, the shooter will engage rifle targets 1 through 10 with rifle from area B, then engage rifle targets 11 through 13 with rifle from area C. Yellow still targets are no shoots. Bye.
So our second stage of day two, which is actually stage nine, they called it fake news. Um, how'd that go? Uh, I enjoyed that one. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was more of another sort of standards kind of a course. Yeah. And uh, so long as you didn't shank around into the no shoot to start off with, and it didn't screw with you mentally. Uh, the, the no shoots, I think, did catch out a lot of people because, uh, especially anybody who's used to, you know, anticipating recoil and pushing rounds low and left, mm -hmm. and that, that one will nail you. Those yellow plates on a few of those, so you had the shoot targets behind those yellow no-shoot plates on the pistol, and some of them were presented quite tight. I mean, mm -hmm. they were—they mean they weren't impossibly hard, but they were—they were challenging. It was a good motivation to not anticipate recoil. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. With the dot, I held high over top of them, and I saw like on a couple that like I was leaving kind of like almost like a grease trail across the top of the target. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I need to go just a little bit lower, but um, after a couple extra rounds on those tighter shots, it was no big deal with the red dot pistol. I gotta say, on this stage, starting off again, this is where I got to bring out that Gun Crafters Industries 50 caliber Glock and flew through those plates without a problem. I didn't mm -hmm. hit a no shoot, iron sights only. I just kind of list favorite high and was able to do it. So that the uh, of one thing that's come through this match for sure, that 50 cal Glock's really done well for me. Stage after stage, I've really had no issues. There was one magazine issue I had yesterday that was my fault. But when I did everything right, that gun did everything right. So, kind of weird to have this oddball 300 grain 50 caliber Glock thing going on and really handled well. What, what's this annotation here? Oh, that was me. Oh, yeah. So, I wrote too low. You're getting to the good part. <laughs> I'm excited about the good part. Let me see the good stuff, okay? Let me get to the bad part. <laughs> so, this happened to me also at Tiger Valley when we were shooting our team match with my short barreled rifle uh, AK, AK, the crank or Suchka. And I actually bounced a few rounds off of glass because there's no muzzle there. There's just a four piece Bulgarian flash hider. And I was looking out through my Russian optic that's like five inch offset mm -hmm. and deflected a few rounds off the glass. And then we get to this rooftop prop and I do have a note here. I wasn't hiding it, <laughs> not hiding it. Um, and we're shooting the long range targets and I'm just missing and missing and missing. I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'm just not stable. Pivot off and move, move to the further range targets and then got them. And the reason that was happening is because of the same thing that happened to me with the short barreled rifle in the AK, in that I was looking through that optic, nice clean sight picture, with the muzzle going straight into the rooftop prop, blowing holes through the rooftop prop. It, if it makes you feel any better, I once did that to a Range Rover. Did you really? Yeah, over the hood. Oh, okay. Well, makes me feel a little better, but <laughs> I now have two instances of doing it, although they were low cost instances. One was some glass on a broken range car, and the other one was a rooftop prop. That doesn't sound very fun, though. Yeah. And this, <laughs> this is where it's a good time to point out, like at other events, the range officer or anyone else would call muzzle for you. Yes, they would. But here, because there's no coaching allowed, the only th commands they're going to give you is if it's dramatically unsafe, they're going to tell you to stop. And here, they just let you hammer away well, at it. it First of all, what kind of gun was that you were shooting when that happened? Uh, that was nail. It was, yeah, all right. Was so, so this is something that's bit me twice when the barrel was particularly short. I'm used to just having that barrel kind of like go over the edge of things. And I thought that's what I was doing with the MDR. And the MDR has pretty significant recoil. And if you can actually watch the footage as I'm shooting the gun, it's got this, I've got this A-10 gun firing thing where I'm like slowly slipping down the roof with every shot fired. Didn't realize I was slipping down below the line of, of the rooftop prop. That cost me. But it's also a second time I need to remember bore offset with guns in which the muzzle is not necessarily a short barrel, but the muzzle is very short in terms of distance away from the receiver. Yep. Short barrel rifle and now this uh, bullpup. It's not going to give you any advance no notice until you start chewing pieces out of the range furniture. Yes, that's true. Or in a, in a real, you know, in another world scenario, if you're behind some cinder block or something like that, it would be a much more spicy experience. So, not a good one. Luckily, this was just a piece of wood.
good lesson to learn. It's a good lesson to learn, and you and the audience get to watch me do it twice, so congratulations. All right, let's move on to our stage three tomorrow.